Welcome to the Freedom Project podcast. The Freedom Project exists to make freedom in Christ known to each and every person we can reach and to encourage and dialogue with those who have already found freedom in Christ. Your host is Joe Weber. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Freedom Project. My name is Joe Weber. So happy that you could spend some time with us today. I'm sitting today in conversation with Terry Wills from Wills Transfer. Terry, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to come into the city and sit down and have a chat. Oh, you're welcome, Joe. Good to be here and, uh, and good to spend some time with you this morning. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen you for a while. I really uh, always appreciate being with you. You know, you have a great wisdom, I find, that uh, I can draw on. Um, Terry, take a few minutes to just tell us a little bit about your family situation. Yeah, sure. Well, I was uh, born and raised in Smith Falls, Joe. And uh, except for four years in Ottawa at school, and I worked three years in Toronto, but otherwise I've been a Smith Falls guy all my life. Mm. Actually, third generation Smith Falls. My, my dad uh, was, uh, lived in Smith Falls, and uh, my grandfather as well. And uh, in 1945, after the war, uh, my grandpa bought uh, two little trucks. My dad was just finishing high school. Mm. He was, uh, just finished grade 13. And uh, they bought two little trucks and started the uh, business in Smith Falls. And uh, kind of interesting back then, two little trucks, uh, probably maybe one and a half tons. And uh, their first contracts were with uh, CP, Canadian Pacific Rail. And back in those days, uh, the rail was kind of the primary source of transportation. The roads were poor, mm. and so everything came to the little towns by rail. And then they would hire contractors to unload the boxcars and deliver the freight in, in the towns. So that was my, uh, my dad and grandpa's first uh, kind of contract, larger contract, mm. big contract for them. And uh, just one more quick story, Joe. Um, lots of manual work back then, no forklifts. And uh, they, mm -hmm. would un they would unload boxcars of flour, bag at a time, boxcars of uh, bricks, you know, with the tong six on each hand, and, uh, and then deliver them to the bakeries in Smith Falls and the building projects in Smith Falls. Um, they, they brought all the bricks in for the, Reed, the old Reader Regional Center in Smith Falls. Some would recognize mm -hmm. that, that building, so lots of truckloads of bricks. Yeah. yeah. Man, that uh, kind of work keeps you in good shape. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were in good shape. They didn't need to go to the gym after. No, that's for sure. <laughs> after a day's work. <laughs> so, so uh, Terry, did you grow up in a Christian family, or did you come to the Lord later on in your life? How did that look for you? Yeah. Joe, I, I, was, I was very blessed, uh, for sure. I didn't think so as a kid, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But uh, both my, uh, both, I think there's actually uh, five generations before me that, uh, that were Christians. Um, my, my great, great grandfather came from Ireland in 1840, settled in Rideau Ferry, not very far from where mm -hmm. I live. And uh, he was a believer, and his his son, and, and then my grandpa and my dad, and uh, and my dad and mom, um, they were they were a great example to me, Joe. Uh, my my dad was the most influential guy in my life, mm. and uh, a great uh, great man of God, not perfect. And as a matter of fact, Joe, growing up, I I thought there was too many rules and too many regulations, yeah. and uh, and didn't agree with them back then, and. Uh, uh, I would say, I would say, Joe, I, I was probably <clears throat> saved as a kid. I, I bowed my knees one time after a very serious gospel meeting with my mom, and I was about seven years old. And, uh, but I would say, Joe, it was more out of fear than really a, a desire to follow and serve the Lord. And so I went through lots of years as as a closet Christian, I would say, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's kind of, that kind of takes me up to the to my school years, anyway. Yeah. yeah so when you uh, entered into a, lots of us understand that reverent fear of the Lord, yeah. and sometimes that keeps us in check. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Um, but when you come up to a place where you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, does, is that a, a, an event for you that uh, had an impact in your life moving forward? Did something happen or was it a gradual process? Yeah. It, it, was, um, it was a gradual process, Joe. It was, and you know, I gotta say, I was, I was probably in my, in my 
early 30s. I went through high school, university, and I think though what my parents had given me and, and, and my simple faith in Christ kept me a bit in the, in, within the boundaries. But it wasn't until I was in my early 30s that I really had a relationship that came alive and, and really became a part of, part of me. And I valued uh, what I had in Christ. And I, and I valued, like I, it started to hit me what Jesus had done for me. Mm. All the stuff in my past and uh, what Jesus had taken on my sin and he bore that. He actually took it as if it was his very own, which is pretty lousy. And, and uh, bore the penalty for me and, and gave me new life and gave me freedom. And uh, Joe, since, since probably early 30s, 30 or 31, it's been a, definitely a different life for me and mm. different appreciation totally of, of uh, my faith in Christ. And uh, you know, when, when I think of uh, what he's done for me, what he's given me, and uh, the hope that he's given me, right? I, I just, uh, I, like I don't fear death. Uh, and my dad didn't either. Mm. It's, uh, it, it was an amazing story how he passed away, but what a blessing, Joe, to go through life with that hope. Yeah. You know, the hope that we have in Christ is, is opens the doors to freedom, and yeah. we're free to move in, in, in any direction that yeah. he would ha have us <laughs> move in and, and that we're obedient to. So that, that's, and that's what you experienced yeah. in the yeah. 30s, that feeling of freedom and that, that uh, openness to the Lord, yeah. just to listen to Him. Yeah. And that's uh, impacted your business since yeah. then as well? Yeah. Joe, it's been, uh, it was eye-opening for sure. <clears throat> um, like, faith in Christ and that freedom in Christ and that relationship with Christ was not just the kind of within the box on the Sunday morning. Mm. Then it, it opened up to every area of, of life and you know being a father being a being a husband and uh and working in the business like to not have that kind of compartmentalized and and be able to have who i am at work and uh and at home as well is uh, is pretty cool i i really enjoy people like a part of what keeps me interested in the business is the people mm. and uh just to be able to uh to talk to drivers forklift operators, guys that are unloading trucks every day. That's, that's a cool thing and be able to maybe pour into their lives just a little bit and uh, interact with them. Yeah, you know, probably 20 or 25 years ago now, Billy Graham and uh, Henry Blackerby both identified the next big move of the church in the marketplace, uh, in businesses, in our day-to-day our -day, uh, dealings with people and being able to reflect that freedom that we have in Christ, in, in the image of Christ. And I think that that is just starting to come into fruition now. So for you, um, you have uh, a, a good deal of employees that you work with? Yeah, yeah. there's about 200, Joe, in, uh, in our company. Um, and I think <clears throat> one, of our, uh, one of our values, we have three values in the company. And uh, the first one is people matter and uh, then do the right thing and uh, continued excellence. They're all actually, if you think about it, they're based on biblical right. values, right? But the people matter stuff is really, really an, an important one. We're not perfect, Joe, for sure, but we, we do love to act out that as best we can. And uh, it's amazing how, uh, how you build relationships just by you know, looking a guy in the eye and talking to him and using his first name mm. and uh, asking him about his kids or his wife or what the hockey game was like or, or whatever it is interest in his life and, yeah. and uh, build those relationships. And something I like to do to Joe is, uh, is uh, I send a handwritten birthday card to every, every uh, employee with a little tidbit about mm -hmm. their life or their, or their interests or whatever. And uh, it's, it is fun to build relationships, right? With well, I, you know, and, and uh, that ministry of just yeah. being present for people is yeah. such a great thing. And that's something that we learn from, from Jesus in the yeah. Gospels. Yeah. You know, he was present for people. He was, he was involved in their lives, and he was there in every aspect of their lives. Yeah. I think it's just so wonderful uh, that you, the way you mentioned how uh, 
this the freedom in Christ has brought a wholeness to your life. Where mm -hmm. uh, we see so many people that do come compartmentalize their lives. Yeah. This is my work life, this is my home life, this is my church life. Yeah. But when we can meld those all together, it, yeah. it brings such a joy and peace, don't you think? Oh, oh for sure, Joe. I was uh, thinking of, uh, of uh, as you were talking there, just <clears throat> about, you know, using your, using your name. You know, you like, you like to be called Joe, right? You like, yeah. that's, it's, it's a popular name with you, right? But uh, I was thinking about, um, about the Lord uh, just uh, the very day that he was resurrected and the first person he talked to was mary and he used her by name right he said mary mm -hmm. and, and that must have rung in her ears pretty amazing right yeah. to hear him yeah. address her specifically because he knows you he knows mary he knows me he knows each of us yeah. by name but not just by name all of us like all what's us. going on inside yeah. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's awesome. Our days are numbered in the palm of his hand. He knows every hair on our head. There's so many scriptures. Yeah. Terry, uh, I think uh, if I remember from speaking to you on other occasions and speaking to Jordy, who's, who's working with you now, your son, uh, this is fourth or fifth generation company yeah. now? Fourth, fourth, Joe. Fourth, fourth generation. generation. Yeah. Um, how does that, if there must be some difficulties you run into throughout the years trying to operate a Christian business in a trucking industry that's yeah. not always Christian oriented. Yeah. Is there some things that, uh, some challenges you faced in that process? Yeah, we had um, just maybe on that same note, Joe, we, we had a certainly a major uh, kind of business threatening uh, situation. We had, we had a bad uh, warehouse fire and um, it, burned, it burned a warehouse down. And uh, we had some challenges with uh, insurance coverage and, and making it right with clients and so forth. And really, it was business threatening. So it's not it's not all it's not all, all perfect. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we um, having faith in Christ doesn't alleviate you from lots of things as you go through life. Right? Life is still life. Yeah. Life yeah. is still life, and, and business is still business. And, and exactly. Yeah, so, so the challenge is, is, is maintaining our Christian values yeah. in that business environment, which can be, yeah. you know, not always clean and yeah. kind of cutthroat sometimes. Yeah, it, it is for sure. Um, I think some of the, some of the things we, we, we try and work at in our business show in terms of that do the right thing and in terms of making sure we, we, we pay the employees on time properly for the correct number of hours they work and just in terms of our our uh, our suppliers and and treat them with respect and and because uh, they're all all key stakeholders in the business as well and the the employees is where where we we spend most of our time um i've i've been asked you know who's the most important person in your business is it the customer is it is it the supplier is it the employee uh, some people say the customer, I say the employee, mm. because if the employee is engaged and respected in the workplace and enjoys what he's doing and is good at what he's doing, he's going to look after the customer. Mm. And so that's kind of how we, we look at that is the, in terms of our people, if we can, if we can treat them treat them well and, <clears throat> and uh, treat them with respect. Yeah, and that again is, is reflecting that image of, of Christ, right? Yeah. You know, just being present and available and kind to people. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, you guys have been blessed in business for many generations, but I also know that, uh, and I know firsthand for, because you guys have helped us with the Freedom uh, Fest Music Festival, but you're involved quite heavily with uh, lots of different ministries uh, throughout through your business, yeah, yeah we are Joe, <clears throat> um, and uh, uh, that's been a learned process too. Uh, I went uh, Heather and I, my wife and I went to a uh, seminar, a weekend seminar on on uh, uh, the joy of giving, and uh, you know I think it's it's uh, it's a biblical principle. It's what the Lord. The Lord was so good at it, right? He was perfect because he gave everything, right? He, he gave himself, he gave everything. But there is a joy in, in being able to give. And uh, part of how Jordi and Heather and I look at the business is that um, we can be used as a, as a bit of a conduit for, uh, for business to ministries. So we do, uh, 
we do a fair bit of uh, work with um, with a, with a variety of ministries, you know, Bible ministries and and uh, ministries to uh, some third world countries as well, and uh, youth ministries, and um, also Joe, what we do. Um, we do work in in the community, just not necessarily with the uh, with the uh, uh, ministries, but with groups mm -hmm. and and uh, hockey, uh, uh, kids hockey and that sort of thing. Right. Just to just to be part of the uh, community because the Lord gave. Uh, you know, think about his example, right? He he didn't just selectively when he mm -hmm. fed everybody in the hillside just pick out his followers. Like yeah. he he fed the whole group, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah. he built relationships and 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 they they loved them. That's right. There's a lot to be learned by that in some of the ways we look at denominations and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, the Lord just was the Lord. He just helped yeah. and, and loved everyone. And yeah. that's the example that we have. Yeah. And I see you guys doing that in your business. I know that you're there for your employees. The, I think you run some prayer groups and whatnot yeah. uh, that people can take part in. Yeah. So that must give you some great pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't force it, Joe, at all. It's, uh, and we try and be, uh, you know, do it with wisdom and, and discernment. Uh, but we we've, we've run the uh, the alpha course uh, at lunch hours uh, mm -hmm. for the employees and again voluntary. <clears throat> but it's interesting when when you get on a little bit of a roll, like people people are born with that curiosity. Mm -hmm. But what's after life? Is this all there is? Is why am I here? And uh, so when, when you when you kind of get those questions circulating, um, we. Uh, Jordy and I, you know, for uh, lunches at work, uh, we, we uh, have a short prayer. We don't you know, go on for 10 minutes, but we just recognize God and his provision and, uh, and his goodness to us. And uh, yeah, just look at little opportunities that we can, uh, we can uh, bring our faith into the workplace. And because uh, Jesus is amazing, right? Like he, he, he's got so much, so much to, to share yeah. and, and, and so many like attributes that it's uh, it's kind of neat if we can share just a little bit. And Joe, it's interesting. The uh, it is absolutely amazing. It never seems to never ceases to baffle me what a Christian in the workplace does. Like that light mm. on that forklift in the back side of the warehouse, right? Like that can just light that whole area, right? Like, and Jesus gives us that light. Mm. You know, when He gives us new life, He gives us a new light, mm. and it is beautiful to see. It, it is, is beautiful to see that. It's very beautiful to see, and I'm, I'm interested in, uh, just done a lot of work with chaplains in the marketplace, yeah. and uh, it really is it's just so important for us to be in the marketplace and present, and, and that's not necessarily being overly evangelical in our approach to people, it's yeah. just being Christ-like in our, and the way we carry ourselves yeah. and the way we deal with people and the relationships we build, yeah. and that's will plant the seeds. And I think that's what I yeah. see happening yeah. at Will's Transfer, and that's really, really nice to see. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, uh, have you got uh, programs planned in work and outside of work? Uh, you're just going to carry on the way you're doing? You're getting, you're thinking about retiring, Terry? Or Well, a dirty <laughs> ass me regularly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I we've kind of got a plan together, and... Uh, We've been really blessed with our succession. We're working through it, and, and uh, uh, it's going really well. I, I'm uh, I'm really proud of Jordy and, and how he's uh, how he's come along in the business. He's been back eight years now, so the plan is the in uh, two years that uh, Jordy will uh, take over my office, and uh, I still intend to work uh, in the background in some way uh, to support Jordy. Jordy, not to undermine him, but to support him and. So the, the part I really enjoy about um, my job is that I can, like I do a, a leader impact group with some Christian guys and non-Christian guys mm -hmm. in the business community. But it's nice to have that, there's a bit of a platform there, right, that you can mm -hmm. invite guys. And so that's why I want to keep kind of the, my foot in the door and, and uh, be able to use that yeah. platform. Well, there's no retirement plan in the Bible, right? Uh, none, none of those guys retired. They yeah. didn't switch their focus, but they didn't retire. Yeah, yeah. Terry, it's been uh, it's it's so good to to be with you. I know you're active in your church. I know you're active in the workplace. If you had a uh, an appeal you wanted to make to the people today that are watching yeah. and speak directly to them, how would you like to encourage them to step into that freedom in Christ that you and I enjoy so much? Yeah. I just maybe two things, Joe. I, I would I would say, um, I know from being on both sides, but from being where I didn't know the Lord and follow the Lord, and where I 
do know the Lord and, and follow Him in, in, in a bumbling way, but I, I do love, I, I love the Lord. And there's so much to be had for that relationship mm. with the Lord Jesus. Like I, I watched my dad have cancer and pass away, and uh, his faith was rock solid. He had no fear of where he was going. And he knew that he was going to be with the Lord uh, after that. And I said to myself, and I've said to my kids, I want to, I want to be that legacy when I die. Like I want to have no fear, and I don't have a fear of dying. So, if you don't know the Lord, I would really encourage you. It's, it is great to know your sins are forgiven, and you have freedom from, from, uh, sin, and uh, you know where you're going. And also for uh, for you Christians in the in the workplace. Uh, just little, uh, just a little love here and there, and just being approachable and and open, and also maybe just kind of eyes that see differently and ears that hear differently as you're in the workplace. Um, every every one of us has challenges and hurts and uh, and problems that we're going through, and and just a just a shoulder to lean on is uh, is a great way to uh, build those relationships. Praise God! Thank yeah. you so much, Jerry. Um, I've been sitting in conversation with Terry Wills from Wills Transfer. Uh, I'm so happy that you had a chance to get in today and, and spend yeah. some time with us. I know you're a busy guy. And uh, thanks so much. Oh, thanks, Joe. Great to be here. Great um, to be with you. Friends, just want to encourage you, as Terry said, to uh, reach out to your neighbor, someone in your workplace. Uh, tell them about the, uh, the, the freedom that you have in Christ. And just plant some seeds and let them know that this freedom exists for all of us who would have it. All we need to do is ask. We have a Lord that seeks us out and he will come to us wherever we are, whenever we need him. So thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, this is the Freedom Project. Our scripture is John 8, 36. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So thanks so much and we will see you next week for another great episode of the Freedom Project.